A new study finds that push-up capacity may be more important and predictive of a future cardiovascular event compared to your LDL cholesterol levels. Now, I know you're thinking, Mike, you're a meathead, you're focused on exercise, where's the science? Let's review the science that was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The title of this study was a 10-year follow-up study in firefighters, over a thousand firefighters, is titled Association Between Push-Up Exercise Capacity and Future Cardiovascular Events Among Active Adult Men. This is a really interesting study. So essentially the investigators tracked a group of firemen in Indiana, 1,100 some odd firefighters of various age ranges between 18 and I think 60 years of age. And they found that push-up capacity to exhaustion was linked, strongly linked with future cardiovascular related events over the course of a 10 year follow-up period, which is really interesting. But even more interesting is LDL cholesterol between the different groups that had low exercise capacity and higher risk for developing a cardiovascular event was not statistically significant between the different groups, but exercise capacity was. They looked at body mass index, they looked at age, uh, blood pressure, blood glucose, as well as triglycerides were all statistically significant. I will add also VO2 max was statistically significant. So I think this is really important because we now have an at-home non-invasive approximation to assess whether or not you're at risk of developing a heart attack or stroke or some cardiovascular related event over the next 10 years. And that is simply push-up capacity. Very significant findings here. This was a respective longitudinal cohort study conducted between January 2000 and December 31st, 2010 in one outpatient clinic in Indiana of male firefighters age 18 and older. Participants were stratified into five different groups based upon the number of push-ups completed and were followed up for over 10 years. So this is really interesting stuff. This longitudinal cohort study of 1,104 occupationally active adult men found a significant negative association between baseline push-up capacity and incident cardiovascular disease risk across 10 years of follow-up. Participants able to complete more than 40 push-ups were associated with a significant reduction of incident cardiovascular disease event risk compared with those completing fewer than 10 push-ups. Now, in case you're wondering what was the push-up protocol, here it is. For push-ups, the firefighter was instructed to begin push-ups in time with a metronome set at 80 beats per minute. Clinic staff counted the number of push-ups completed until the participant reached 80, missed three or more beats of the metronome, or stopped owing to exhaustion or other symptoms, such as dizziness, lightheadedness, chest pain, and or shortness of breath. Numbers of push-ups were arbitrarily divided into five categories in increments of 10 push-ups for every category. So we're going to talk about the significant details here and the differences between the number of push-ups people could do and their later risk of developing a cardiovascular related event, including whether or not LDL cholesterol was even significant in this study, which I think is incredibly interesting. But first, friends, I just want to thank you for being here. I appreciate your likes your comments and your shares. I would like to know how many push-ups you can do. I'll post or share with you this video here at an airport while traveling. We decided to bang out some push-ups and we hit uh, 40 push-ups uninterrupted in the in an airport type setting uh, over the course of, I think it took like 110 seconds. So I think you can do this. And uh, you know, it felt great before getting on an airplane just to bang out 40 push-ups. And um, and since exercise is really important, obviously exercise capacity is really important for multiple facets of health. We're going to talk about the uh, what the investigators write here about muscle and muscle strength. Uh, I want to remind you of the novel creatine enhanced electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. What makes this product unique is it's the only creatine containing electrolyte on the market that features high doses of creatine monohydrate. From Creapure Creatine, this is the cleanest creatine on the market from Germany, 2.6 grams per serving, paired with electrolytes that enhance the absorption of creatine. You're getting sodium, magnesium, potassium, a little bit of calcium. All the all of these electrolytes that I just mentioned help enhance the absorption of creatine, the utilization of creatine. So creatine needs electrolytes to get into your cells. This formulation also features taurine. So there's over 785 reviews from people just like you who are using this during their exercise sessions to enhance their exercise performance. You can save over at Myoscience. Dot com using the code podcast at checkout. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com. I'll link it in the description below. Okay, so let's check out table one. Incredibly interesting because we hear so much about the nefarious LDL cholesterol, right? So we would suspect that if there was a between group difference between LDL cholesterol levels and adverse cardiovascular outcomes, 
we might see differences between the groups, but we don't. Surprise, surprise. So LDL cholesterol levels was non-statistically significant between the different participants and their push-up capacity. But here's what was different is standard cardiometabolic risk factors such as blood pressure. The p-value here between the groups, to no surprise, people who couldn't do more than 10 push-ups uh, or had to stop at push-up nine and wait three seconds or some such, they had significantly higher blood pressure compared to people who could just bang out 40 push-ups. What about HDL cholesterol? Not statistically significant between different groups. What about triglycerides, right? We don't hear much about triglycerides because the only way to lower triglycerides is with fish oil or a low carb diet or exercise, right? So mainstream medical doctors generally don't focus on those things. They want to give you a statin. Well, it turns out that there was statistically significant differences in triglycerides between the different groups, meaning that people who can only do less than 10 push-ups in a session had much higher levels of blood triglycerides compared to people who could just bang out 40 push-ups. Also, glucose levels. People who could barely do 10 push-ups had significantly higher fasting glucose levels compared to people who could do 40 push-ups or more. What about VO2 max? It's no surprising finding that people who can't even do 10 push-ups have a very low VO2 max compared to people who can do more than uh, 40 push-ups at a given time. So you can see the, the trend here. Poor cardiometabolic health, including physical health, is linked with a higher risk of having a heart attack in the future. So these are things we should be focusing on. You might want to take a screenshot of these biomarkers, and we talk a lot about this in our blood work masterclass, lowering triglycerides, prioritizing uh, metabolic health and decreasing your liver enzymes and improving blood glucose control. So why does muscular strength matter? These investigators write, muscular strength has been shown to have an independent protective effect for all-cause mortality and hypertension in healthy males and is inversely associated with metabolic syndrome, incidence, and prevalence. However, most of those studies were either cross-sectional or conducted with adolescent participants. Our retrospective cohort study provides further insights into the association of greater physical fitness, specifically muscular strength, with cardiovascular disease related outcomes in an occupationally active cohort across 10 years of follow-up. Our sample size and follow-up period of 10 years also provides sufficient data on cardiovascular disease related outcomes and exit events to observe significant associations. Okay, so let's spend some time on this figure here. This is the Kaplan-Meier survivability curve over the course of 10 years. I want you to focus on the dark blue, and that is the group that can do less than 10 push-ups in a given session. So this, these are people who have high triglycerides, higher blood pressure, higher fasting glucose, increased waist circumference, poor metabolic health, and poor physical health. So the odds that they will survive over the next 10 years is only 80 is 0.85 or they have a 15% lower odds of survivability compared to people who can do 40 or more push-ups in a given session. So this is really important and I think showing that you know physical fitness and the ability to just perform 40 push-ups or yeah, at least more than 10 push-ups. But it's important to acknowledge that physical fitness has translative health benefits when it comes to reducing your odds of developing a cardiovascular related event. I think that's the big take home here. And you can see this in this Kaplan-Meier curve, the survival probability, there's a 15% difference in the people who can barely do 10 push-ups versus those who can bang out 40 push-ups. That's a massive swing in terms of a 10-year survivability. And so Kaplan-Meier curves really help to give you a better insight about what sort of event or intervention will enhance survival over the long haul. And it turns out that being physically fit can enhance your survivability. I don't know that we have this sort of data when it comes to statin use uh, or lowering LDL cholesterol, to be totally fair with you. Most of those uh, clinical trials like to manipulate relative risk and don't really talk about absolute risk. So again, it's important to just the take home here is that physical fitness helps save lives. The more fit you are, you're going to reduce your risk of developing a fatal heart attack. Now, in conclusion, the investigators write, in this 10-year longitudinal study, participants able to complete more than 40 push-ups were associated with a significant reduction in incident cardiovascular event risk compared with those completing fewer than 10 push-ups, which may be explained by significant differences in recognized cardiovascular disease risk factors at baseline among the groups. But again, what was insignificant was LDL cholesterol differences. They talk about other cardiovascular risk factors like triglycerides, 
blood pressure, as well as VO2 max and push-up capacity. But LDL cholesterol differences, again, if LDL cholesterol was the sine qua non of cardiovascular disease, wouldn't you suspect that it would be significantly different between the different groups? But it wasn't. Okay. The investigators say the findings suggest that being able to perform a greater number of push-ups at baseline is associated with a lower incidence of cardiovascular events among adult active men, the investigators write. The findings that higher baseline push-up capacity is associated with lower incidence of cardiovascular events. Although larger studies in more diverse cohorts are needed, push-up capacity may be a simple, no-cost measure to estimate functional status, which I think is incredibly interesting. So what are the gender differences here? Well, we know that women generally have similar lower body strength compared to men, but when it comes to upper body strength, there are gender specific differences. So if you're a female and you're like, oh, I can only do, do and you're very fit and you can only do say 25 or 30 pushups, that doesn't mean that you're going to be at significantly higher risk compared to you know, men that can do 40 or 50 pushups at a given time. Give yourself some grace and understand that generally speaking, women contain majority of their muscles musculature in the lower body, and there's a bigger gender difference in the upper body strength. You can see that in powerlifting with events like the bench press versus deadlift or squat, where women generally trend on par with men with deadlift and squat, but there's a huge gender difference when it comes to bench press maximum because uh, men, generally speaking, have more upper body strength than women and the, the, there's less of a significant difference in the lower body. So give yourself some grace if you're a woman. I will do follow-up uh, research to see if there is uh, any specific studies or related studies like this in women, but I think logic would suggest that women uh, who can't do, say, seven push-ups in a given session or you know six or seven uh, might be at higher risk compared to those that can do say 25 or 30 push-ups in a given session so I think that's important and um, I will be following this research and keeping you posted on this but I think the take-home message is quite clear. Muscular strength and exercise capacity is not just for meatheads. It's not just for bodybuilders. Uh, this is very cr clinically relevant when it comes to reducing the number one leading cause of premature death in this country, which is cardiovascular disease. Uh, and so we want to improve our physical fitness. That helps reduce our blood pressure. It helps reduce triglycerides, waist circumference, visceral fat, and much more. So it makes sense then that being able to perform physically would be associated with a lower risk of developing a cardiovascular event in the future. So as always, friends, I'm grateful that you tuned all the way through. What did you think of this conversation? I will put links to the study in the description below. As always, I'm grateful that you're here. I appreciate your likes, your comments, your shares, and we'll catch you on a future episode down the road.